This is the Blockade Pimple Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, is Jared Morgan. Hello, everybody. I had my arm poised to wave to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it's 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 been it's been a a gap, or a bit. How long has it been? I'm forgetting. <laughs> it's been. Over I'm a forgetting. Month. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> Hi, yeah. welcome back. You might remember us from. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's been one of those things, folks, where uh, my schedule went flipped upside down, and suddenly I was working way late nights and uh, just being exhausted and not having any thought about pinball and doing content and then when it would align that me and jared could actually do something it was like oh but no i'm going to go do something with my family that weekend or whatever else popped up um so yeah it's uh we have an excuse it's not necessarily the greatest but <laughs> yeah well you know life happens it and does. uh what are you gonna do right um but that's okay. We've got all manner of uh, things to talk about today. Uh, everything from what the heck is Zen doing with Netflix to, uh, Jared, I think there is a new aspect to VR that you might want to investigate. Uh, we'll go into that. We have new pinball platform to discuss, um, as well as brand new game from Zen to discuss. Um, and yeah, that's a lot's happened in lots, a month. <laughs> lots happened in a month. Um, now, during that month, some of you have, may have noticed that I started a new series. <laughs> I've been calling it um, Clueless About EM Repair because I started diving into my target alpha and seeing what I could learn about it. Um, so if you feel like watching me fumble about without a clue what I'm doing on an electromechanical pinball machine, uh, I... <laughs> Please check out the series. Maybe you have some uh, clues that you can tip me into. Um, the fun mm. thing about that, Jared, is that it's motivating me to tackle my other machines. Finally, to actually finally rip the bandaid off and and fix the other ones. It's as less well. about ripping the bandaid off and more about um, properly fixing what the bandaid didn't. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I understand. No, yes. it's, it's, I'm I'm gaining <laughs> a lot of confidence with just tinkering uh, with Target Alpha. Um, the, I mean, again, it's it's not got really anything major wrong with it at all. Um, no. So as you said, gameplay has kind of made it work again, which is classic EM, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Literally, that's been my my go to method of fixing. Is wait, have I played it today? Well, let me go play it and see if everything's still okay. And it's amazing how many things have like, wow, that wasn't working before, and now it is. <laughs> and they've just ungummed themselves they with do. a bit of hammering by solenoids. It's right. funny, percussive. <laughs> it, that's where the term percussive maintenance comes from, right? <laughs> it's that it's the hammering of solenoids that free up things that should be free. Yeah. So there you go. Um. And then after I get done uh, doing the, the, the stuff that's camera worthy on this, I'm going to dive into 8-Ball Deluxe. And if that makes me feel good about myself, then uh, then the firepower. Because <laughs> the, fire, the firepower is the biggest hurdle, right? It's got, it's, it's the, basically depopulated play field. It's completely, de it's not just depopulated on top either. It ain't got no wiring harness you, on the bottom. You got wiring looms everywhere. And that scares me to no end. Um, as long as you haven't bundled up uh, the wires and sort of crumpled them into a big mess, they're just going to retain their um, their memory, and you'll just have to restaple them down. Just lay them yes. out. And In theory, that should work because I literally slid it off onto a big piece of cardboard, and it's lived on there ever since. But It'll be fine. That was like six years ago. <laughs> as long as you haven't moved it. It'll be fine. It's like it's been in stasis for six years. Right. Has it really the, been the, six years? I remember us talking about this I, like it might a be while longer. ago. It might be longer. Probably. probably. Um, Look. The the thing is, is and this is what... Ah, the dangerous part for me is when I start watching pinball videos of repair and everybody makes it look so damn easy. Yeah, and it's you not. Go, and you go, yes, that's the way you're supposed to do it. But then you realize they have oodles of experience and they're not just plunking themselves deeper into the hole. They know how to climb out of it. Um, mm. so, they put a ladder. Yeah. yeah. I've, been, I've been watching, and again, the worst kind of channel for me to watch, um, High End Pin. 
It's oh, this, no, don't watch those channels, Chris. It's this, <laughs> it's this guy in South Carolina who does high-end pinball restoration, um, and he's been doing two Whirlwinds. Now, you all may know that Whirlwind is one of my absolute favorite machines ever. It's the, oh, yeah. It, it and Roller Games are the games that taught me how to play pinball. Um, and he's doing... He did two of these. The series is now done. So if you want to look it up, look it up. It's now finished. Um, but he's done two whirlwind side by side. One back to out of the box factory. The other he's doing the total chaos mod. Oh yes, yeah, right. But he <laughs> he's kind of funny. He really doesn't like the total chaos mod. He's like it's unnecessary. Don't care for it. Don't like the color scheme they put on the back glass. Do I want a DMD on this machine? Eh. And so. He decided, and you can tell that he's a painter. Right. And so he came up with a paint scheme for this cabinet that is gorgeous. Used 27 stencils. 27? And he got them all perfectly flat in the end. He says the cabinet feels like plastic now. It is freaking amazing. Um <laughs> And you're just watching his process and what he's going through and going, yes, and yes, and yes. And I was just watching him watching him rewire it. And he's talking, oh, yeah, so I've got the lamp loom and I've got the solenoid loom and I've got the wiring loom and they're all separate. And he's putting them, you know, and, he, and when he desolders and cuts, he just clip, clip, solder, um, psh, done. Psh. I'm just like. So he's separated all the three primary looms from the the original loom yes and he separated them out into individual because he wow. wants to elevate it off the back of the play off the back of the the play field so that you have easier access to things so that things aren't melting or getting in the way so he has his own i don't know if he 3d printed them or what he has his own like elevation standoff. stick Stand, to, to stand raise off. things up. Yeah. He wound up just plain rewiring part of the table. <laughs> I, 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 okay. I, I'm staggered. He he opens up his his whole shop is set up for pinball. It's, a, it's, it's stupid. Right. And he opens up his drawer to just reach in for parts that he needs and he's, you know, it's like, oh, I need new um, uh, stand-up targets. Opens up the drawer. Uh, now this one's good enough for this table. You know, he's just got like this pile of. He's just got parts everywhere. He sounds like he's like a professional. Oh, he like, is. Pinball. I looked up his prices. Oh, his restoration prices. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, yeah. If, okay. if you have to ask, he can't afford. So, <laughs> just labor. Uh, says the what's his labor rate? Price of labor is between sixty five hundred and nine thousand dollars just oh. for labor was well, that for like a full restore that's for a full restore wow so you're paying the cost of a pinball machine for his labor and honestly and that's and and again that's mm. not including anything else that's just for this time that's just the time so he's going to uh -huh. build you a new cabinet more than likely uh um, right he's going to restore that play field or get a new play field he, he doesn't do he doesn't really do painting of the play field so much no, um, no touch-ups. No, but he is he he's about to do a Twilight Zone, and he ordered mm. a playfield. Holy crap! He was ripping into the playfield manufacturer. No. Oh yeah, because he goes through it with a fine tooth comb, and it's either perfect or not good for him. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it was it's like just this like, is this is fine or nope. Yeah. So when you there's a lot of by the yeah, end there's of, a lot of shortcuts happening out there with playfield. Yeah, like remakes at the moment. I mean, I, I mean, I'm figuring by the time he's done with all the parts and his labor, you're probably looking at a close to twenty thousand dollar. I was going to say that sounds like about twenty grand yeah. US. Yeah. Um. So you could pretty much go walk up to your local um, Stern dealer and buy a brand new in box, um, latest release game actually probably well i'm talking about australian dollars here yeah. because that's how much they are uh, yeah 20 20 grand will get you a brand new machine in box yeah but it sounds like that that's essentially what you're also getting when you go through him a brand new machine in box pretty much pretty much so like, he just started yeah. a new series that i'm about to start watching because yeah now i'm addicted um mm -hmm. he's doing, <laughs> he's doing a gottlieb rocky 
Oh yeah, I know that one. Um, and so, and he already said he he goes. There are certain parts on this that are unobtainium. Un- unobtainium. Yes. So I'm right, very yeah. curious to see when it's unobtainium, how he restores and what he does to bring it up to to spec. But anyway, it's funny. I've uh, I. <laughs> yeah, don't. Yeah, those are very expensive journeys to go down. Uh, yes. So this is why you like when you're doing a restoration. Coming back to, you know, the you know, the real world? <laughs> coming back to the ground <laughs> from the fifty thousand foot high up in the sky view that you just looked at in that video. It's all about choosing what you do and what you spend your money on. Yeah. So I've said this before on the show, but for me, it is mechanics and boards. Uh, if I, if I'm going to spend any money, it's on buying new everything that actually matters to how the game works. People literally don't if they if you want people to be able to play your games on location and have fun with them, they don't care what the playfield looks like. I'm being deadly serious. If the game plays like it's new, that's all they care about. Yeah. Like, and I've learned this for the. This is the, I've got my fourth game very close to being repaired, um, ready to go. It's a timeline, Gottlieb timeline. So that will be four Star Series 80s Gottliebs that I'll have in my garage in Star Wars right? um, by the time this one's finished. And the I did a bit of extra work on this one with the playfield. I essentially kind of repainted the entire playfield myself um, because reasons because <laughs> <laughs> i started and i went uh i guess i have to keep on doing this don't i yes yeah. yes jared i do so i did end up doing the whole play field and it's definitely not you know old mate pro restores like level great but i'm telling you it looks pretty good mm-hmm. um and and then you whack on top of that brand new plastics well not brand new plastics but um you know flipper bats um, posts and stuff like that and you're getting the thing back to pretty close to what it was unfortunately speaking of unobtainium uh, the playfield protectors or what we often call plastics but that's the actual name playfield protectors the things that go over the voids um, unobtainium so I can't get them but what the um, what some people have found is that they can actually get them if they have the originals they can take them along to someone who can actually refabricate them for them so yeah at 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 an expense but uh so this brings us into an interesting uh angle (laughs) my buddy who helped uh well he did most of the work um (laughs) for helping me build the uh, pin sim cab because he has a cnc machine and um he's got a laser cutter and and stuff like that he's on the verge of buying an inkjet printer that can print four by four. In other words, you could put an entire playfield on there, and he could print directly on it. Onto the playfield. Onto the playing field. Um, as uh. he put it, though, you need the uh, you need one to one graphics. Otherwise, it's going to look pixeled on there. Also, but, it needs to be like full resolution graphics. Full resolution, but. He's also thinking about going with a smaller version printer in which then I asked him, wait, what can you print on? And he goes, I can print on anything. And I go, you can print on plastic? And he goes, yes. I went, oh. Oh, so <laughs> you can print on Playfield plastics, mm-hmm. protects this thing, can you? Because mm-hmm. ah. he already cut me out of Lexan for 8-Ball Deluxe, uh, the inlane guide that goes to the flipper. Oh, and yes. We have to still adjust. It, it's still not quite, quite right. But he mm. already did that. He did another playfield part on it. Um, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like there's people out there that can now do this sort of thing. Um, if you can yeah. provide the art, they can provide a clean version of plastic. It's um, pretty wild. Yeah, what I'm, uh, what I'm I... quickly realizing, too, uh, as I'm going on all these pinball part websites um yeah i'm less interested in fixing how a machine works and more interested in hey what mods can i put to on the machine Mm -hmm. um and like for instance i have a box here 
Ooh, what's inside what's the in box? the box? I don't what's know. In the box? I have not opened the box yet. <laughs> let's let's open unboxing. The box. Unboxing video. Uh, what's in the this box? box comes to us from Comet Pinball. Comet Pinball makes LED lights. Oh, you got a box of LEDs? Well, what I did was because I'm thinking about putting LEDs onto Target Alpha, but I don't know how they're going to look. So mm -hmm. I bought this fun pack, which is a sampler pack of their LEDs. Mm -hmm. um, so it's actually a really good way of trying out LEDs yeah. in a game. Yeah. Um, so what do we got here? We have uh, Frosted Sunlight Bayonet. A oh, nice. Flex Green Bayonet. So it's a little flexi tab up there. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. They're good for getting angles in weird places. Natural white bayonet. And a red bayonet. And warm All white frosted. Color. And a clear non-ghosting pink wedge. <laughs> so, yeah. it's I think it's 20 different lights for 10 bucks. Um, and then... And you can actually try them in the game, see which ones see actually what, look all right. Then yes. order 50 of them or 100. 100. <laughs> is what mm. I'm going to need. Um, 100. Yeah. And then because of buying this, you get a... Uh, uh, basically, they'll pay for shipping on your next order. All right. So There's another thing you can do as well, and this will probably be the last thing we talk about before we actually talk about digital yeah. stuff, yeah. is that uh, there are <clears throat> there's a company, um, or companies, I should say, that will actually sell you um, LED printed circuit board replacements for your under play field insert lights. And they're essentially an LED with two surface mount diodes on this bit of circuit board. And what you do is you take your old socket out, you put this board in and you wire the original wires to it. And it just attaches, it even has like a little screw hole. So Isn't you can use called, the original like, screw. Like pinsicle or something like that? It's like a popsicle. Yopsicles. Was it? Yopsicles. 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 Yes. Yeah, I Yopsicles. saw that. Yopsicles. And look, if you are faced looking down the barrel of having to replace a fair few sockets because they die on Gottlieb's uh, like really badly, uh, you can do it like this. Um, and honestly, if I didn't have a whole toolbox full of sockets, because <laughs> I still do from <laughs> all the restores I did, I would just be buying a couple of sheets of these and just rewiring them all mm. because they've like, depending on which ones you buy, um, they actually have a, um, they've done them so they, they have about the same um, glow and color as an original bulb, like an incandescent. Mm. So they've, they've done it really tastefully and they will last for 10,000 hours. You won't have to replace one of these for decades. Yeah. Um, and I would absolutely do it. Um, I think it's great. And um, I was strongly considering it for timeline, but I had some really weird... Um, the tic-tac-toe matrix in timeline is like, it has a little divider in each lens. So there's a left-hand side of the light and a right-hand side of the light. I just don't think these the obstacle or these um, these sticks would actually work so well. So mm. I've kept sockets for those. Okay. But mm. Yeah, um, <clears throat> there's going to be a uh, Titan rubber order coming soon too. Oh, well, I have nice no, buttons. Yet, good. That's, I'm going to go with that too. Um, all right, yeah, let's go into the, uh, the, the digital world. Um, New pinball mm. platform, Jared. Uh, uh, yeah. This kind of uh, snuck up on me. I didn't even realize that there was a, an original version of this. Uh, Slot Shots Ultimate. That's a pinball by a company, uh, by a studio by the name of uh, Pinblend Studios. Um, mm -hmm. Little, small studio. <laughs> I've emailed them and talked to them, kind of found out their history a little bit. Um, they're using... Uh, something from Tropical Studios called Pinball Creator for Unity, which is mm. software that anybody can download um, and then use it to create pinball. Um, it's pretty cool. Pinblend Studios has gone a little bit deeper into this. They put a slot machine element into this. Um, yeah. There's uh, how many tables? Is it nine it or, or more? I think there's a little bit more than nine. Might be a little bit more than nine. Um, yeah. Some of them are from the original version. Some are, are new uh, upgrades. Um, anyway, something for all to uh, check out. I know the full retail on Steam is uh, 20 bucks. 
however, we have three codes that we can give away. Mm. So if this is something interesting to you that you want to check out um, and want to uh, get a code for, please email us. Just ask for uh, Slot Shots Ultimate so that we know what you're talking about. Um, if we get, hopefully we get more than three emails sent to us, um, we'll just make a drawing out of it and then, uh, pass those codes along. Um, but you can email us at blah, blah, blockade at gmail.com. That's B L A H three times Cade at gmail.com. Um, I'll put, make sure that, yes. uh, we put that in the uh, notes here for this, uh, too, but, uh, that way you guys can get a chance to check it out. Um, see, throw some support, some support behind somebody new doing uh, pinball. Uh, we'll probably come uh, with an actual review next time of the game itself, but um, it's certainly worth taking a look at. And entries close on the 20th of February, 2024, just in case you're watching this after the fact and yes. you go, geez, I'd like a code. Uh, yeah, they close on the 25th of February, 2024. There you go. At some point. <laughs> uh, all right. Now, Jared. Mm. You know Greg from Spaces Arcade. I do know Greg from Spaces Arcade. He's a good egg. He is a good egg. Uh, Greg, in <laughs> he just had something happen to him. He did a video about a VR arcade that you could walk up to the machines in the arcade and play them. Uh, classic oh, video that sounds games. cool. Uh, it apparently hit the YouTube algorithm jackpot. And <laughs> he said... He suddenly had a hundred thousand views <laughs> in one wow. in one week. Um, gained a thousand subscribers in that time. It was just like blew up. Um, that it's that one time where you that, just yeah. you, you get it. So something was right. Whatever that was, I bet you he's going. Geez, what was that? <laughs> so I can redo that again. So interestingly enough, he has been doing a lot of VR content. Because that's what the that's what the machine wants. That's what the machine wants. <laughs> um, now he had previously then he's touched upon the that uh, Podog mod for doing um, VR Epic and games. anything. Yeah, Epic v games VR and, and anything VR. Unreal. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, but he also does VPX in VR, and he says yeah. it's incredibly easy to get set up, and it's mm. well, I think it's the only way he's playing digital pinball now. Um, so I just oh. want to point that out to you, Jared, because he's got videos on how to set it up. I um, see. And it doesn't seem like it takes a lot of oomph from your computer to get it going. Now, that's interesting. He actually did two videos for me <laughs> that he then published publicly. Um, because as you all know, I'm getting one of these Legends Pinball 4K machines. And yes. the idea is that then I'm going to hook up a computer so I can go OTG and just play my Zen games that way. But look, if I'm going to have a computer hooked up to this thing, yes, I'm going to want to know how to have VPX running on it. And yes. last time I touched VPX, as we've discussed this before, was VP8. Mm. And things have only gotten more complicated since then. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> um, right. When I say yeah. complicated, it's not like there's installers and all that, but it's the sheer amount of things that now have to be installed because uh. people are doing these animated back classes and they've got their own media kits that are going in with these things. And there's just right. a lot more going on. And so I asked Greg to kind of do a brief introduction. Like, I'm a noob. How do I do this sort of thing? To which he made the video and then he went, why did I do that? I realized why I've never done one before. It's a pain on the butt. <laughs> <laughs> so right. if uh -huh. you want, go to Spacey's Arcade on YouTube, look up um, Visual Pinball, start here. That's video number one. And then that's followed up by get all your VPX tables here. That's the really cool video. Well, I mean, the other one is very informative, but the cool yes. video is in terms of it sends you to a site, visual-pinball-spreadsheet-web.app. I know, long. That's that's the, that's good. Yeah. Hey, but look. What's genius about it is it organizes. You look up the table. It tells you various magnet sites to go to get the table. It tells you. Yeah 
which version has what features on it in terms of does wow. it support um you know dmd does it support lights does it have uh the, Dof. the doff does it have the cool um uh physics all that and then it also tells you where to you can go to look to find the roms so none of this is hosted by this it's just None. a link site that sends you in the proper direction so that you can get it, all the pieces that you actually need. It sounds like it's a it's a spe specific and bespoke in uh, like search engine just for that one very specific thing. Yes. And that's kind of cool. Yeah. That's that's that is and we've said this before. This is the main problem of of like sure you can get it installed and yes it's not easy, but it's possible if you know what you're doing and you're guided by someone like um, Greg from Spaces. But then it's like, well, okay, I got this thing. How do I get the content? Because the way you used to be able to get it before, or like the you know content um, designers and and teams now are less public about they sharing have their very file. specific sites that they upload their stuff to. Um, yes, that they make sure is not commercialized, that they make sure yeah. does not have connection to the ROM site or the ROM site does not have connection to the table site. Yeah, it's got to be very segregated mm -hmm. in order for them to, well, not get in trouble and not yeah. risk um, getting, you know, crossing the gray line that is VPX and, yeah. you know, tables and stuff. But this is even for the uh, non recreation tables. Um, These are new ones that uh, the ones community that are, set up. Yeah, ground up builds. Um, mm. So, uh, like I said, and because the ground up builds, they all of a sudden have these things called pup packs, and like there's all this other stuff to include, um, you know, media to download, or it's like they even have, they got permission from uh, the designer of uh, TNA, uh, mm. Total Nuclear Annihilation, um, to recreate the table. And then, but they were like, but it's nothing without the music. So then they have a link to where you can purchase the music um, to be able to cr put it into the game. Uh, yeah. So, you know, the, the the community is getting support here and there from various designers also. Um, yeah, think, it's cool. Yeah, it's cool to see that, you know, some of, you certainly won't see it from Stern. No. Because, well, there's no. Stern. But I think the boot, there are some, you know, people like Spooky. Uh, and in you know, in this case, Scott Denisi, who you know designed the whole thing with TNA, yeah. And you know, they're going well. Why wouldn't we embrace this and actually make this possible? And I think that's if we're going to see more commercial entities do digital pinball, that's the approach yeah. that the community needs to take. And I think VPX in this um, in this arena are really, and the community at a whole are really setting the pace for how that can work and demonstrated exactly what, you know, can be possible if everyone just works together and gets the job done. Yeah. So I think it's kind of inspiring what they've been able to do. And you know what? Maybe I could actually install it and give it a go, you know, in my infinite spare time that I have. <laughs> um, and that's the problem at the moment, right. right? Yes. So I do have a confession. I haven't been playing digital pinball hardly at all. <laughs> Now, mm -hmm. I have my reasons. Reason number one is having the actual machine out in the garage and it just calls to me um, <laughs> to go bat around on it and work on it. And it's it's new and exciting, right? Um, yeah. And it's been a It's the honeymoon time. phase of pinball ownership. Like, <laughs> it really is. <laughs> well, yeah. And it's, yeah. It's, amazing, <laughs> it's amazing how because of that, I dusted off the 8-Ball Deluxe, even though I knew it had some problems. I was like, but how bad are the problems? I've been batting away on that. It's making me, mm -hmm. like I said, this whole thing has made me like want to dive it's in. It's reinvigorated your passion for actual real pinball again, it hasn't is. it? It is. And, of course, it triggers that addiction where you're like, well, three is nice. Um, <laughs> mm. I can fit six machines in my garage, Chris. You know that? <laughs> yeah. It's right. a six-garage pinball. Pinball hall, but I found out that if I don't park my car in there, I can actually fit twelve. You know, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> so you know, there's options, right? But honestly, in anticipation of getting the Legends Pinball Cab, I've kind of been holding off on playing digital because I want to. I don't want it to be an immediate it? compare and contrast. 
Mm. I want to experience it as, say, a new customer that is new to digital pinball would experience it as. Yeah, um, maybe a new customer who this might be through the a game Legends 4K, their first experience with digital pinball. Yeah, perhaps. exactly, exactly. Um, now, obviously, I can't rewind the clock and you know pretend that I've never played Adam's Family, um, but I can at least almost forget what it looks like in pin effects right now so mm. that I can see what it looks and plays like on Legends and then I will go ahead and boot up <laughs> the the pin effects and then I can start doing the actual compare and contrast. Um, but I just want to mm. see from a you walk up to it, you start playing it, is it fun aspect? Does it work like that? You know, how, how is yeah. that? So that's why I've kind of just not been playing anything just in anticipation so that I can come at it with a little uh, fresher perspective. Yeah. I haven't been playing a lot of digital pinball probably until oh, maybe a week or so ago because it's it's been a chaotic a chaotic yeah. month and I've I've had some interesting games in the garage that have been shuffled around due to reasons mm -hmm. um more one of my games is with someone at the moment i've got one of theirs so i've got like a you know a corvette and a paragon in oh, wow. my garage at the moment and uh, i'm telling you i am hammering the paragon <laughs> absolutely hammering it it is uh there's something very special about getting that game up to 5x and getting a big bonus count and the musical treat that you get from doing that makes you want to do it every single time I think it we're going to have to have you boot it. up uh, Pinball Arcade and do a compare and contrast. <laughs> I don't have Pinball Arcade on PC. It was only on mobile. Oh. Um, and I'm, I I, mean, yeah. It, I had to do... I did a little bit of work on this Paragon just for the person who owns it. Like, a, There was a bit of GI problems, which I where it was able to rectify. Um, just, you know, loose sockets and bulbs that were a bit dirty and stuff yeah. like that. So I, I fixed that up. Easy. Um, also found a, an issue where the game, if you machine gun the flippers, you know, rapidly flip the flippers all together, mm. it would have tripped the fuse. And I went, hmm, I wonder why that is. But I realized that there's a bit of play in each of the flipper assemblies. So I think the coils are running at full power oh. if you rapidly flip yeah. and it just popped the fuse. And also the fuse was a fast blow, not a slow blow. So I put a slow blow in there and tried to pop it again and I couldn't. So I think I've kind of fix it but i convinced the guy that he, I'm, I'm basically going to do it for him for free um plus parts um to rebuild all of his flippers because this game is going to go to b pack mm. and if this thing has new flippers on it it's going to play amazingly um so and that thing is a yeah. wide wide body it's like a but square you know what's weird table right? it is a, it is a square but you know what's actually weird what's it's that? the same width as my gottlieb games but my gottlieb games are longer <laughs> Oh. huh yeah so my super wide body is like star race yeah it's both wide and long wow yeah so the the big play fields like when you stand in front of paragon i've got like a uh, about six inches more play field i think mm -hmm. to play with on the length and the width is the same so it's the the godly ones are big which is why they're so heavy to move yeah um but everyone loves them because it's like so much more like that six inches makes a massive difference right uh, to gameplay but paragon is it's a delightful game it really is um so there you go there's our reasons why we haven't been playing much digital pinball but new table we have dropped. done some recently <laughs> yes yeah yeah and a new table just dropped so uh zen has put out system shock um, mm. Now, it's a Pinball M release Yes. that if you purchase on Pinball M, you'll also get the toned down version for Pinball FX on every platform except for Steam. Except Steam. <laughs> That's right. Now, on Steam, it's not available at all in Pinball FX yet. Yeah. Um, now, according to the Discord channel, uh, initially, it was an issue with Valve not letting them do it in terms of buy here, play here. Cross buy. Yeah. Right. Everybody else, Epic Games, Sony, Xbox, Nintendo, 
all said yes. Yeah. Um, but Valve didn't. Since then, Valve has said, yes, we will. So, oh, uh, interesting. Zen did the correct thing, <laughs> which is not putting it out also on PinFX because you know what would happen. People would buy mm -hmm. it there, and then once it became free, would complain. <laughs> Yes. Of hey, of course but I already paid. Now it's cross by. I need a refund. Blah blah. No. So right now they just put it in PinFX or, or in Pinball M. Let you play it in Pinball M if you're on Steam, and then yeah. eventually it's going to become available um, in PinFX, and you'll get that as cross by entitlement. Um, I would be very interested for those people who do have access to it on PC through Epic Games. What are the differences between the two? So if you if you're on Epic and you're in the comments, tell us what it's look like, and I will read back when it's not two a.m. in the morning when this <laughs> premiere, um, and see what you guys reckon. Because I, honestly, I'm looking at the game. I'm going. The only thing they could really take away from it is the speech, because the speech is has a disturbing tone to it, which is of the aesthetic of the game. But they could only tone that down a little bit, I think. I'm going to say right now, having had a look at it on Steam, um, there are uh, guts all over the play field <laughs> uh, yeah, spilling yeah. out of people. I guarantee that's gone. There's blood splatter yeah. on the ramps. I guarantee that's gone. Um, yeah. I haven't come across, because I, I, I haven't played it enough to, to even notice. Um, I haven't come across if there's any language. Um, I haven't actually like completed a mode or anything to see what malevolent feature might happen to those animated figures on the play field to know if there's uh, again ultra violence happening there um mm. but i mean i can quickly pick out what things are going to be stripped for the toned down version um, just yeah visually i don't know look i think for this one i don't think I'll be playing it in pinball effects uh, when it comes out. I'm quite happy to stick to um, pinball M mm -hmm. for it. I think this particular game would it, like it's it's interesting to like use the comparison between um, uh, Woteg and Woteg Director's Cut um, in pinball M. Yeah. Um, because yeah, I'm not painting the one in pinball effects anymore unless I have to for I whatever reason. I wasn't playing it in pinball effects to begin with, but I have played it in pinball M because <laughs> yeah. of that damn music. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That that is yeah. The the having the music switch out is one of the main reasons why the pinball effects version is very much dead to me, uh, and the pinball M reigns supreme. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think System Shock works really well in pinball M. Um, so yeah, I don't really anticipate myself playing it too much on um, Pinball FX for Steam when eventually Valve um, does the needful and lets them release it. Yeah. Um, have you had a few goes, a few plays on it yet? Yeah, I really hammered it yesterday, actually, before um, the show. I wanted to give it a really good go. It's Correct me if I'm wrong. Is this a Zoltan table? No, I can't tell you that. I, don't, I didn't actually look at the designer on that. So said it bad. Was. I don't know. I don't usually like his tables. The few plays on it that I've had, I'm like, this is pretty cool. It's got a yeah. really ridiculously cool ramp at the back left playfield. Yeah, that is that is quite the assembly. It actually gives me. There's two things it gives me. It gives me pinball circus vibes, mm -hmm. like the fact that you have to elevate up literally three levels of the playfield, and then you get taken to the digital breakout game um, when you reach the top of it, and that's like really well realized and it works really well and the synthwave vibe that's on that is just absolutely on point it's, it's, it's like i want those, i want to get up there all the time it's a feature that when you walk up to that kind of machine in real life you're like oh i want to get my ball up there yeah i want to see what that does because it's got stuff on each level it's not yeah. just like i i don't want to actually just shoot the balls up each of the consecutive ramps and do it like on that first level You've got a mechanism that actually allows you to activate lock. Mm -hmm. um, so you you got to shoot the 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 mechanism that's to the right of the the ramp, and that actually opens up lock so you can get multi ball. 
So you've got to get up there to do it. Like you've really got to get that that shot dialed in. But the other thing that I noted immediately when I played the game was like, ah, nice nod to Stern's Godzilla um, with the with the magnet that grabs the ball and flings it uh-huh. like that. Like that is a a really nice digital recreation of of the action that that special omnidirectional magnet has in Godzilla, which is like one of the coolest playfield features. The fact that it can grab the ball and go yeet and just whip it around and go up the other thing. It's so cool. So I went, I, I saw that and went, oh, nice. Nice homage there. Very good. Um, uh, bit of an interesting table choice too. Just system hmm. shock. Where did that come from? Um, yeah, I interesting. vaguely remember it from you know years back, and I know it since has been remade. Um, I never played the original game, so the the story is all new. I've never to me, played it at all, but I do remember mm. the cover art. Um, and uh, it's just kind of one of those that you're like, where did this come from? That Zen went, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> that's the that's the franchise that we're gonna hit here, right? Yeah, it's a yeah, it's. It, I do agree. It's come out of nowhere, really, but it, it's a really good fit for pinball. I think. Yeah. Like it feels really good, like really good. Um, so yeah, not not knowing the the tropes in the game, I this one is actually one of those tales where you don't really need to have knowledge of the game, the original game. I think to get the most out of it. I think, and. You know, walking up to the game, I des- I deliberately went no, not reading the instructions. The first, like, I'd not read the instructions mm-hmm. since opening the game, mm-hmm. and I was able to find my way around. Yeah, like, which is good. Work out what I need to do. Yeah, yeah, it's it's got everything that we've been asking for in design, like walk up playability. Um, I think the 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 shots you need to make are well called out on the playfield. Um, the skill shots really interesting. It took I me a while to work out. For it. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I took me a little while again because it's the fun of experimenting and yeah. not reading the instructions, right? You're like, it took me a while to work out. Oh, there's a segment that you need to actually target on the on uh, the planet, and you got to try and get the ball to stop at the segment. It's like that's a really mm. cool mechanic. I like that a lot. So there's plenty of like in this table. Honestly, it's it's a really solid release. I think I had to do a a, a bit of. Um dousing the fires <laughs> in terms of and this was on facebook um but people that are you know going, oh, no williams again and no. and so i went to the comments and i was just like uh look there's gonna be 15 releases this year um of those there's gonna be williams released and then i had to do the whole explanation of before williams even came to zen they had their fan base. That fan base didn't want Williams coming to them, so they're still trying to appease. And and you know, after I explained the whole situation, a lot of people were just like, "Oh, okay. Well, I just want more Williams." I'm like, "Yeah, no, I understand. You want more Williams, but we all want more Williams. Let's be frank, like, right?" Get, but but the thing is, is when all they do is release Williams, then people go, well, "I want a Zen original." So, <laughs> mm. yeah, no one. You can never please everyone. No. That's the thing. No. No, you really can't. Um, I, I will also point out that right now, Zen has most of their catalog on sale. Mm, yeah, at the um, time of recording, yeah, they're the offering recording. steep discounts. In fact, uh, there was one person who actually I saw on one of the Steam forums was going, uh, you know, you go, oh, I, yeah, I thought, well, what's... You know, they it was big discounts. I thought I'd go and buy it, and then they continued to have a big rant about why they hate it. And it's like, oh, just... <laughs> <sighs> okay, whatever. Well, I'm amazed you know. that there's still people that are doing the FX3 is so much better. Yeah, I don't know how they're making that claim. <laughs> like, it's I don't know. Yeah, you know, it... and, and I get it. Some people have really been having issues with the game running smoothly. But on on older hardware, yeah, it's like a. But I it's have not... older hardware. I'm only running on a 1060 Ti. It runs perfectly fine on mine. But here's what if I'm you not... dial down the graphic settings. No, my graphic oh, settings really? are up. But here's what I'm not doing. I'm not trying to make it run at 120 frames. I'm locking right. it at 60, just the way that Zen designed it to play. 
<laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I think it's the people that are trying to run it at... at like 144 and 120. Yeah, that it wasn't... I think... Well, I think if you run it at 120 and you're running it at the proper hertz, yeah, uh, like where it's paired up, then it is fine. It's when you have a mismatch of monitor to... Yeah. That's where the frame rate starts like getting wonky and the physics start going wonky. Um, Correct. So I've got my my Sony flat screen that I run the computer on in the lounge room. It maxes out at 120 um, hertz. Yeah. And I've got it set to 120 frames per second. The monitor to 120 hertz. I've had no issues. I mean, so, yeah. I gotta would, make it match. There's no doubt about it. My video card works harder on PinFX than it ever did. Without a doubt. On, yeah. on FX3. There's no doubt. I, I don't mm -hmm. deny that in the least. But no. graphically, I don't... I'm not going, oh, why is it ugly? I'm not seeing mm. it. I just... I don't... I'm not there. Um, so I don't understand. You got things like, Damn. like NVIDIA Reflex and stuff like that now in there as well, which is do, designed to actually help people with older hardware you know, get a good experience. Yeah. So, you know, they're, they're doing... I think they're at the stage now where they've sort of um, they're looking at quality of life stuff now yeah. because they're they, the platform is essentially I'd like to say stable like they've worked it out and it's now a baseline specification that they can the, the like foundations right basically yeah so the foundations are set now it's just a matter of finding performance tuning and that sort of stuff so the whole re-engineering from the um, uh, PX engine to Unreal, I think is now we could pretty much put a pin in that and say it's done from a you know a broad strokes perspective. Mm. Now it's just a matter of going right. Now we have that the the new platforms there. Let's build on top of that now and refine it and performance improve it and go from there. You know? They just did an update. Um, I downloaded it yesterday, uh, and I mm -hmm. read the patch notes. There's a lot of bug fixes. Apparently, mm -hmm. they finally fixed the Adams Family uh, uh, issue with Thing Hand oh, all time. Oh, uh, nice! So it's worth looking at the patch notes and that seeing was what they did because they they really there's a lot of tables that they touched and uh, and worked on um, mm. and fixed some of that. Uh, I think they're going to continue to try and get the performance better. Um, that's just going to kind of be behind the scenes action. Well, this is going to be, they, they need to, because yeah. let's be frank, they're releasing this year on core platforms that require performance to be the best it can be. Yeah. Um, so VR, whether they choose to go with a native quest three headset experience or whether they do um, air link through PC, whatever option they choose there, the platform needs to be on point with that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're seeing other platforms emerging. Like, we know that um, I think they're looking at doing mobile this year as well. And, you know, that's <laughs> that's going to really take some performance tuning to get right, you know. Funny probably, we should probably, mention mobile. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right, because there's a mobile thing out now, right? There is, actually. Uh -huh. So, out of nowhere, um, like, no hint, no announcement, it just suddenly was there um mm. zen has teamed up with netflix for netflix gaming much in the same way that they did with apple arcade in mm -hmm. that if you have a subscription to netflix you have access to this new game that they have called pinball masters um Pinball Masters plays on your mobile device. I'm sure it will play on your PC as well. Um, I haven't tried it on the PC. I've only played it on um, my mobile device. Uh, mm. It has eight tables in it currently. Uh, that being Adam's Family, uh, Godzilla, Kong, Godzilla vs. Kong, uh, Curse of the Mummy, Wrath of the Elder Gods, Pinball Noir, and uh, Grim Tales. So mm. all tables that weren't in Apple Arcade, to the best of my knowledge. <laughs> You're correct. Yeah. Um, 
So it's kind of funny, you know, if you have those two subscription services, you've got a whole host of uh, digital pinball on your phone if you want. Um, yeah. But yeah, is... kind of, it's kind of like, okay, interesting. Now, if you start putting two and two together, you know that mm. Texas Chainsaw Massacre got uh, a beta test on Xbox for oh, yeah. uh, Pinball M. And Netflix has their own Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh. So, yes. obviously, a partnership had to have been, licensing agreement had to have been struck. I am would not be surprised if you see Texas Chainsaw Massacre pop up on this Pinball Masters Platform. relatively soon. <laughs> I think that there's two, because there's two, there's actually a physical version of uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's spooky, that... yeah. Spooky's done, but that is the original. original movie and not the Netflix series. Right. Um, so you're correct. I think you might be onto something there, Chris. I reckon there might be a, a probably a toned down version of of that game um, coming into the Netflix platform. It would make perfect sense. Yeah. Now, this is a really interesting point that you've just brought up, Ryan. Mm. These are the cross-licensing deals that we're seeing a lot of at the moment. So you buy this, you get that. Well, and this is now it makes... you buy a Netflix subscription, you get this for free. It's included. Yeah, but I'm, I'm talking more about the, the content in oh, the game. Oh, oh, okay. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, this deal was obviously struck and I think your call out there is correct. And by striking this deal, they said, oh, by the way, here's a nice little license you can have a play around with as well as part of the package. They wouldn't have done it for free, obviously. Yeah. Like, <laughs> there no. is no charity when it comes to this sort of thing, but it would have been, you you get this, and if you do this for us, we also will allow you to do this really nice property as well. So it makes me wonder, how is this going to affect um, other table streams coming out in 2024? Like, is it going to be, are we going to start seeing the larger package deals? Like, I have to, I have to think... The whole Star Trek Next Generation, and then magically seeing all these three Star Trek tables coming out, it's like, how, how did that happen? I would pretty much think that there was like, like, do do they do this in licensing? I don't know. Maybe I, you can speak would, to it. Like, I would have to believe that when it comes to these much larger licenses uh, mm. that are, you know, call them your AAA licenses. Yeah. Um. The studios don't want to just sell a small chunk. No. The only way you're going to grab their attention is by going, we want a whole bunch. And yeah. then we want to really saying, do this yeah. and not just go, oh, this one thing is kind of like we, we need a license to be able to do it. Right. It, so it's more, it, it's purchase in bulk. And now we're talking now because now we yeah. feel like there's it, it's good for both of us. Instead of only having one thing to talk about, we can have multiple conversations of things to talk about. Um, mm. Yeah. So, I mean, you can only imagine with as many original properties that Netflix has um, what that could potentially mean for Zen. Hmm. Um, if that's I mean the, the obvious it goes, but I think that it also goes for all these other studios too. Um, that again, much like what you said with Star Trek, I have a feeling that if we see um, certain other licenses that Zen goes after, that it's mm. going to be a larger buy. Um, it, there's going to be some Zen original stuff coming with with some of these. I'm I'm I have to think that I don't know what other Williams are coming this year, but if they're uh, if there's a license associated with them, I think there's going to be a license plus. Right. Some it's that whole thing that we thought was going to happen with Indy, where we thought we'd get a couple yeah. of Indiana Jones tables. But I think you're yeah, right. That's right. I think it's going to be an extension. Um, if they're going to buy yeah. a license and go why through not, all the why legal Why not go all in? Yeah, go for all and the legal whole hassles. Why not go that, you know, once you're already in it, it's not but a couple more steps to go fully into it and get yeah. more. And just look what they were able to do with those Star Trek tables. Like they've got like licensed actor likenesses on there and all sorts of stuff that, you know, on brand new bespoke tables, it's like, uh, 
<laughs> that's a that wouldn't have been easy to negotiate. No, like no. you know, we know how hard actor licenses and all that sort of stuff. And even like even if they're using sound alikes, they're good sound alikes on mm -hmm. these. Mm -hmm. So it's like, mm, yeah, that's interesting. Very interesting, actually. Yeah. Um, so the question is, how does Pinball Masters play? Well, yeah, how does it play? If you've played Zen in mobile platform before, that's how it plays. Um, right. It's there's a bit of a disconnect, no doubt. It you're playing with a BB. It doesn't have that funk, that feel. Um, mm. I will also say that. And I really noticed this on the Godzilla table. Because they are wide body, you feel like you are miles away. It's like a pinball game for ants. It is. <laughs> and then you pop in Adam's family, which is a standard body, and it's how it should be, right? You feel yeah. like you're much closer. So, yeah, these wide bodies... It's, aren't translating well. No, you're too far away. You can't read a single mm -hmm. insert because it's microscopic. Um, yep. So, and and it's easy to lose the ball in all the effects and lighting that are on them. Um, I think you really need to play with ball trails on. You do in um, in in mobile for sure. I mean, that's what that's what that's there for. Like people don't realize that you know ball trails on actually is an accessibility feature. Um, thinly veiled as just a regular game feature. It's there for people who have eye tracking problems. Yeah. So it's really important. Um, like, turn it on. You'll enjoy the game more if you're having trouble tracing the ball. Uh, the lighting? I mean, <laughs> I'll, I'll put it to you this way. It's Again, mobile. the GI lights go off, and there's like this pie wedge of light that flashes across the table. It's not, there's no fall off. There's no, it's not this wonderful glow. It's more like a bing, no. burn, bing, burn, you know, um, yep. simulating what the light would be. Um, but again, it's a mobile game. If if you are going to download this for free again, because you were already paying for Netflix, yeah, and you're going to complain because this is the only thing that I play on, you got issues. Well, that's not really <laughs> an excuse, really, is it? No. Um, yeah. So you can, you know, you can have, you can be, you know, your opinion. You can be disappointed about it, but you also have to be real, realistic about what it actually is. Yeah. But you can guarantee this. They will be going, having a look at what is going on on this Netflix mobile platform and learning lessons for when they actually do a full mobile release of Pinball FX later on sometime. Exactly. Um, Same as so, they learned for Apple Arcade. I'm sure mm -hmm. the lessons they learned from Apple Arcade, they applied to this. And eventually there's going to be that mobile app where you can pay and buy your table to buy DLC yes. just and like you can on PC. Like it's yep, it will be a thing. So this is this is the first iteration of probably a couple of iterations before they actually do um, full blown pinball effects mobile. I would think at the moment. So stay tuned. This is the beginning. So you're at ground zero if you're playing it on mobile right now. Yeah, I mean, am I going to tell you? Oh, you need to play this. So go get yourself a Netflix. At, uh, no subscription no no but but look if you got one already, already a netflix subscription <laughs> so check it out if you do right um <laughs> and 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 check it out and give feedback yeah. right yeah so that's the way it will improve if you if you are a concerned citizen and you have a problem with it we'll tell someone about it just don't sit on it yep uh any other business we should cover there jared uh, I know, put you no. on the spot. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think we got. Uh, oh, what about the quest lines that they just released in Pinball Effects? Do you know? I didn't even look at it. Do you know about it? I did. I actually did. And they are awesome. Like, oh. it's basically Pinball M, but sanitized for um, Pinball Effects. Oh, so, so those those extra uh, things yeah. that were in Pinball M, those extra challenges already, are now in Pinball Already Effects. came over. You bet. They're already uh. in there. That does remind so they, me there is something that popped up for cabinet mode users. Um, yeah. They now have DOS support, which yeah. is, for those of you that don't know, it's uh, what allows uh, solenoids and flashers on people's visual pinball cabinets to fire. Um, 
So mm. now it's going to be a question of, are they going to also include the surround sound feedback kit uh, support? Yeah. Um, so that was a big question we had, wasn't it, with the whole um, At Games Legend correct. Um, 4K and the fact that on, on the go, it didn't really actually have any interaction with the solenoids built in. So it seems to me as though, well, now you got that. If you've got uh, a pinball effects uh, PC, you can actually set that up, I would imagine, and tap into the the things maybe well doff is different than ssf doff uh, is they actually powering then, right? lighting and true solenoids huh. sound surround sound is powering those haptic speaker dilly bobs so so am i under the wrong assumption that there's actually actuators or like in there's the no, there's, there's, no, there's solenoids. no solenoids no i'm getting confused with um the arcade, Arc arcade one up had solenoids yeah yeah it's um, actually had actuators right if i have to guess and this is purely a guess uh we're not going to get surround sound feedback support in pinball effects until they have it ready for all the tables right why are they going to be making it ready for all the tables because they're coding it into whatever they wind up porting into the at games legends version that's right so yeah. there is a very slow rollout right now of machine or of tables because I think Zen just plain wants the tables in people's hands before they offer the games that they can purchase for them because what's the point of announcing something you can't even play it yet, right? Correct. So I have yeah. a feeling that by the time, what is it? The I think the Attack from Mars will be the final. I think that was the last one announced, uh, mm. the, a cabinet. I think by the time that comes out, the Zen will finally roll out a whole mess of uh, tables that you can download. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think so. I think once they've gone through and coded, again, you code it for there, you've already then coded it for your pin effects. So, yeah. Um, and it would have, like, if we're looking at the exclusivity um, sort of stuff that, you know, these platforms love to have, um, that would have been out on at games first. Yeah. And, then, you know, eventually at some point it gets rolled back into core because Pinball Effects still is the core platform. And this is like, we see it, right? This it strengthens, it strengthens this um, notion because we've now seen those Pinball Effects um, custom mode features appear back in the core platform again, right? Yeah. So it will come back to the mothership eventually, I and think. And on top Don't, of that, I mean, uh, we know that the deal with at games is not exclusive. Um, no. Zen can partner with anybody else that they want. Um, and I, yeah. the software is not at games, the software it's Zen's it's, software. That's so, right. So Zen is the software partner correct. and at games are the hardware partner. So there, there's probably nuances in the contract, obviously about what, they can and can't do, and there's probably they will probably, if they've been smart, have exclusivity periods. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's Zen's software, yeah, and they are offering it to under contract to At Games. So uh, I guess this is a good way of summing everything up here uh, for those of you that are wondering because you care so much. Where mm. is my 4K <laughs> <laughs> Legends <laughs> pinball? Um, <laughs> so. I was told that if I paid for the pre-install of the surround sound feedback kit, that I would still have gotten it at the end of January. Um, turns out that wasn't true. <laughs> um, and they only took people's money that pre-ordered the surround sound feedback kit uh, last weekend. Wow, okay. And... I was told because I was getting it installed, don't pay that one because that would just have them, I would have to pay shipping on something that's going to be pre-installed. <laughs> um, right. I only got the notice yesterday to pay for the surround sound feedback kit in the full pre-install. And now that I've paid that, now they can actually ship it to me. So 
what was supposed to be initially end of January. And they had even told me, oh, yeah, if you do the surround sound feedback kit, you won't get until the end of February. And I was like, no, I don't want that. Just send it to me. And then they're like, no, we can get to you sooner. I was like, yes, do that. And no, it's going to come to the end of February. <laughs> yeah, man, whatever, right? Whatever. At this point, I'm just kind of like, eh. You it, know. It'll turn up at some point. Exactly. You know, uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's where I'm at on that. Um, and yes, I'll be doing a whole video on uh, unboxing and setting up that, uh, especially considering that I've seen some people's stuff get damaged in shipping thanks to FedEx being very terrible with the shipping. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That, well, let's hope that's not you. <laughs> I hope not. Yeah, because yeah. I don't want to go through that whole rigmarole. But no, anyway. that would not be fun. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. I know that we're eventually going to get to some actual gameplay videos. <laughs> eventually. We'll get there, folks. Um, give us time. Um, Jared, you going to do any uh, videos on the projects that you're working on? Uh, I've on... Well, I have done some videos um, of things I've discovered along the way. Um, I haven't been uploading them through the channel, so I've been putting it up on my own YouTube Um and just things I've found in uh, servicing the the timeline pinball machine. So if you want to see some random videos of me talking about tech stuff, just come over to my own channel and have a look there. Uh, Chris is focusing all of his um, repair stuff on the on the Black Hair channel, but my stuff's weird enough that I don't really think it's going to fit in so well with this channel. Weird and short enough um, that it's like just two minute videos of things that I've just found and I want to tell someone about it. So yeah, come and nerd out with me over in my channel of those ones and, yeah. uh, and go for some actually well-produced content on <laughs> from Chris on, uh, on this channel. <laughs> well-produced is a, uh, a, a, a friendly gesture there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> shot and edited on an iPhone. Um, <laughs> so well, look, Hey, at least it's got a title card. Mine doesn't have that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I do, I do gotta say, if you, uh, if anybody out there has advice for me in my repairs as I'm going forward, let me know. If you have um, a place for parts that you trust beyond the obvious ones, um, please let me know. I mean, literally, me going with Comet Lights, uh, just I kept on reading everybody saying that it, they're the best. Um, mm. that they've had no hassles with any of their stuff. So I was like, might as well try the sampler pack. So, you know, we'll find out. Uh, believe me, there'll be a video on that too. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. If you have any parts for the machines that I'm working on that you just feel like sending my way, please do. I'll take those donations. Um, you can donate on Anything PayPal helps. to us too. We, you know, we always are looking for the funds to continue doing things in this channel. Um, if you have games you want us to try out, if you have uh, controllers, any of that manner, contact us. Give us a chat. Anything yeah. pinball we exactly. like that. So tell us about it. Like if you if you're making something cool and it relates to pinball, tell us about it because we you know we don't just stick to digital here. We go off off the off the script and just yeah. do cool stuff that comes our way as well. So and we don't you know, have around. So <laughs> no, we don't. No, no. Like we we thought about it. It's too hard to do that. <laughs> just send us a coffee occasionally we'll be happy with that all right through paypal thank all right. you so uh that's it for uh this go around uh definitely stu stay tuned to the channel because there is other content that uh, pops up um what we'll talk about next time is anybody guesses but jared's it's stuff and things mostly things the usual all right so mm -hmm. until then folks thanks for watching and we'll see you next time see you later